Ah, hello everybody and welcome to another video. So we're just re-entering this chamber off screen. I did just do a little bit of grind. We killed a few things, respawning enemies that I managed to find. We got a little bit of meat. We got a toad tongue, two silver roaches I managed to find in the lakes, and two bits of warg meat. I do kind of want this. Uh, we're going to find ourselves swimming in food in a second, but this will help us at least for uh, a short while uh, until we get out of the ruins. So yeah, who is ready? Today to get out of the ruins of Deserun. Let's see whether we can do it. It's kind of weird because I'm calling the ruins of Deserun just the top floor here. And the floor underneath I'm referring to as a completely separate thing. The archives. Um, while in the pyramid I, I refer to all the floors as the pyramid. So I don't know. Maybe I'm a bit wrong there. But we are going to get out today. Uh, as I explained at the end of the last episode. We basically just have a left uh, area to go and a right area to go. I'm going to take the right first. We've also got the hamlet of Stormbreach here. If you guys remember from last episode. Um, I'm going to take the right. And we're going to do this little side area here. This ultimately will get us a key that will um, let us pull one of two levers to get through the final door. So, uh, I mentioned right at the start of the Ruins of Deserun that it's a dungeon that has a lot of verticality and I think that really comes into play here. There is a secret in each of these tiny little areas and this one actually took me a while to figure out. Uh, here you'll notice we're just kind of in this room. There seems to be a lot of stuff going on above us but nothing we can really do. Well, if you do uh, play, pay close attention, you'll notice there is a, a, a button here which will open this secret door and allow you to actually start climbing up. So, up we go. Hope you guys are doing alright today as well, by the way. It's 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 really starting to feel like December for me. It very rarely snows where I live. You know, you might expect it to snow a lot in England or something. Really, it's just miserable. It just rains a lot. And when it does snow, it becomes slush in like a day or even half a day. And then it's at the point where everybody hates it anyway. Um, so here we can climb down. And uh, yeah, so that kind of bitterness of winter is now descended upon me. And it doesn't really excite me that much. But here we can climb down and sort of make progress further in, right? But if you notice over here... We did have another ladder that took us even higher up. So if we come even higher up... Oh, well, it's a dead end. But over there, you will see that there's a chest. Ah, so... How do we get the chest? And this had me stumped for ages. I thought, you know, maybe there was a secret button. Maybe we get to it from another side. I mean, what is all this for? But uh, I ultimately figured this puzzle out, right? You've got to think about stuff, like, in terms of the way that things are developed. And this really helped me out in this puzzle. Because, let's say it is a secret button. We know that there's not one here. So that would mean you'd go back downstairs, right? But then I, th I got to thinking, why does this exist at all? If we're just going to arrive there from another side, we have to use this at some point. Well, so I had a look around, and I looked down this corridor we just walked down. And really... It's just very dark over there, right? You can't really see very much. But if we climb down, um, and I think we can make this drop without hurting ourselves here. Yeah. Climb down and look all the way up, you'll actually notice very slyly, can you see? It looks like there's some kind of recess all the way up there. And it's so out of reach, it's ridiculous. But it is there. So, what happens if we climb all the way up and, you know, launch something over there? Fires uh, an arrow, perhaps, throw whatever you want. Let's do it you'll actually see that it hits a pressure pad and it creates this bridge that not only allows you to reclaim your stuff but it also um, allows you access to this chest. Now this is a locked chest and just before, actually no we can unlock it uh, I'm actually well aware that this could be a mimic this time. It was a mimic on a previous file so how can we best prepare for the mimic? Because you can't really charge a weapon and be prepared. I guess we could um, no we can't really create a barrier either this is kind of interesting. Oh, do you know what would be kind of crazy? Alright, there you go. It is a mimic. That's fine. What if we do that? Oh, nice! And now he's locked. But we can't do anything while he's locked in there, can, can we? I guess we can just prepare ourselves. Oh, maybe we can uh, stealth ourselves now. Oh, this will be amazing if this works. Um, put out the light as well. He's going to get released in a moment. Come on, Sanon. Alright, cast darkness. Now we're stealth. Down in the darkness. And when he gets released... Here we go. Oh, 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 no, we're not invisible anymore. No, 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 I fizzled. No, I'm trying to do this big elaborate way of beating him. Oh, God, the spell casting system. Oh, all right, fine, whatever. Let's just kill the mimic. God, he looks freaky in the light there. Look at that. Ugh, you are not flattering when lit from underneath. That's generally true of anyone, but mimics in particular, not very flattering at all. Here we've actually got some loot then, I guess, that fell on this thing. Where's, where's the loot that he dropped? What did he drop for us? That's kind of messed up. Did it fall on the floor, I suppose? Maybe? Because you really don't get much out of this chest, if I remember. Like, maybe it fell through, guys. If I drop something here, what happens? It lands on top of it. Okay, so what? Are we just missing something? I can't remember what it... Oh, here we go, here we go. This is what he dropped. So he gives you another Zarkton harpoon. 
I did drop stuff back off in the vault, okay? So we're all right, or the hub, sorry. So we're all right, but we actually have two of these now, um, which will help us do more underwater damage. We have not seen the last of underwater stuff in the game. And over here as well, there you go. He also drops a rage potion for us, so we've got that. We're gonna go reclaim this arrow. And I believe stepping, oh God, I can't remember. Yeah, stepping off of it will make us fall, and we sustain two injuries, and the injury was so bad on Lotopatho that uh, he can't move anymore. So if we move the sickle sword, can he move? I don't want to waste a blood drop cap. What can I say? It would be ridiculous to do that. Uh, all right. Can you unequip some more gear? What's what's his heaviest gear at the moment? I don't think it's those. Uh, maybe it's... I, I guess it's the bombs. If we get rid of some... There we go. So now he can move. All right. I'm going to stagger back to the save crystal and see you guys in a second. That was all just for that one secret, which I was not intending on spending so long on. But yeah, that is the mechanic, okay, here. It's... You can drop down one height just fine. Two, you can't, unless it's underwater. And if it's underwater, I think you can drop two, and you'll be perfectly fine. You won't injure yourself in any way. So, yeah, some of you guys might be wondering now, what about using the rope, you know? What if uh, what if we climb up here, and then we try and use the rope without actually going through a floor, but still to negate the fact that we would have taken damage? Well, it doesn't work, so it says cannot climb down here. It only works if there's actually some kind of a scene transition. Perhaps a little bit of a disappointment, but maybe there was some mechanical reason this wouldn't work. I'm sure it's something the devs would have considered. Uh, over here on the right, we've got some more bombs. Two frost bombs, uh, and I guess... We can put the lightning bombs back over into Loto Patho as well. Uh, I thought I saw a button on the wall, but apparently not. And some bread, which is great. This is not where we begin swimming in food, just because there's bread and stuff rolling around. It's something very different. It turns out the lands beyond Deserune are plenty bountiful. I'll put it that way. So we've got these kind of long corridors, and we come into this room. This is one of the areas I was thinking it would be really awesome to end a video on, but because I don't want to do a 10-minute video for you guys, I think we're okay. Now, you'll notice all along here are a bunch of undead. It's kind of funny because it's like the pyramid was one civilization of people to have come here and um, now these, the ruins of Deserune, are like kind of the Viking civilization or whatever that came here at some other point too. So these guys are all dead and just staring at us. I wonder who was here first. Did it mean that the guys that built Deserune did it in the shadow of the pyramid and they just never found any way in there because they never traveled to the bog? Kind of an interesting idea. Uh, and one lever. I think it's pretty obvious what's going to happen with this lever. Um, all these gates are going to open, right? Surely. And we're going to get attacked from loads of angles. But no, that's not actually what happens. They will surprise you. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the lever and then we're going to turn around. And this teleporter... Oh, that feels so good when that happens. Oh my goodness. This teleporter will start releasing uh, skeletons to us. Or it should. And I'm a little bit annoyed that he took so long. Because at the same time, there's another teleporter behind us with even more skeletons that are going to be released in a second. So you, what you want to do is kill all these guys as quick as you can. See how Tikri just got hit there? That's because people are flooding in behind us. Now, if the skeletons, you know, are actually quick about how they move around, you're not going to get turned around. Basically, you can kill all of the guys from this teleporter, and then you can kill all the guys from the one in the other uh, side of the room, and, you know, you can always be on top of them. Um, you'd be surprised how much damage these archers do as well. Oh, but they're, they're going to be surprised at the damage we do. This is crazy. Oh, my God. I, I love the Moonblade right now, especially with the crits. The, just the, the attacks are so frequent. Loads of Papos going mental. Okay, so there you go. That's six uh, different enemies are going to attack you. Now, um, what happens if we go through this teleport? Because it's blocking our way back out, right? Well, we come into the side room that they were in already. Uh, and we'll find a blood drop cap here, which we can give to Tikrit. Slowly bringing our supplies up. There are no um, switches or anything. And obviously, we do have the option of going down these pits. But we'll hold off on that for a second. Uh, and now we'll come down over here as well and find the other area that they attacked us from. And here we'll find a key. So this is this little area done. We now have one of the two keys we need. Give that to Loto Patho. And uh, behind is this... Yeah, okay, this teleporter, right? <laughs> Almost got very confused about exactly what this did. Uh, I'm just checking for any buttons. I don't think there are. Because we've already got the secret of this branch, right? The, the secret was earlier where we fired the arrow across. Um, you got another teleporter. And this one will take you into the other chamber, right? So this is uh, ultimately how they all got through. Uh, so we still got the trapdoors. In theory, we could just leave, I guess. Because um, we could go like double through the teleporter maybe. But uh, we're going to go down here. We're going to go down and we're going to see what we find. And this might surprise you. <gasps> we're underwater. Look at this. We're in a dungeon underwater. Oh yeah. That's totally what is happening here. Really, really cool. Uh, again, this was uh, that could have been a great cliffhanger for an episode. Oh, he wasn't even facing us. There's no way to know what direction an ooze is looking. We're being attacked from behind. The ooze can disease us. That's not happened on the series yet. 
but I do want to make sure everybody's familiar with that fact and not tank too many hits. Because again, it's just wasting supplies. A lot of people have been leaving messages saying, hey, you know, I really enjoyed the series, I decided to buy the game. I've got an alchemist and the game is totally different. You know, I've heard that so many times. Um, it kind of makes me regret not getting an alchemist. It's just the class looks kind of crap at first, I don't know. Didn't really get any good perks, but I suppose it's just so useful just giving you these rich bounties constantly. Oh my god, please die. Ah, oh, he diseased us right at the last second. Oh, what? Was that the second ooze? Why don't I remember killing the first one? <laughs> Whatever, okay. We've got two crossbow quarrels there, so we're up to 11 of them now. So here's the disease. Um, if we go stats... Uh, oh, it doesn't actually tell you on stats. That kind of sucks. Is that a trait at the moment? It says, oh, you are diseased. No, it, it's not. All right, well, anyway, so basically this means we're not going to have any regeneration. We're, we're stuck with this. But we can craft ourselves up a brew to fix that. I kind of regret that we're not using this very much, you know? Like, it'd be kind of cool to send more enemies to sleep. But he's undead, and I guess he can't go to sleep, so that's fine. Um, all right, so mortar and pestle. Now, the cure disease potion. Oh, no, I, okay, well, that's fine. I didn't actually mean to do that, but the cure disease is going to be an etherweed. And a uh, falcon sky, and it'll make this yellow looking potion. You bring it over here, you're gonna drink this antidote. And uh, as you can see, there, Jonker is now perfectly fine. He's hungry too, so we'll do that. That's fine. Uh, I'm pretty happy with everyone else's health. We can just range these enemies down here, so let's go for that. Yeah, I know there's a dart over there. Oh my god, he managed to hit me. That sucks. We've also got our fireballs. Which are significant, because remember, this really old spell I was using, the, the whole water mage idea. It won't go across this water, yeah? It will just sort of fizzle, because there's no there's no path for it. It looks like that skeleton's actually trying to run. Maybe? Oh god, oh god, how do we... How do I cancel the spell if I accidentally mess that up? That's kind of interesting. There you go, he's turned around, so we'll do that. Oh, nice! Oh, that feels so satisfying. It'd be cool if you could, like, backstab, back shoot somehow. I don't know, it's like a really master perk. Like, if you master backstabbing and you master ranged weapons, maybe you master crit or something, you get, like, this mega perk. There's a, a, a big mod project um, for Skyrim that concluded recently. Uh, basically, a guy did a mod um, where he did, like, a big perk overhaul, and it was one of the, the biggest overhauls for Skyrim for a long time. Uh, and he's done a new version of it now, and there's these special perks on it that you get right at the end of trees, and you can only sort of have one for your entire character. And I love that idea of somehow being in a Grimrock. I think that would work so well. Anyway, I'm rambling about Skyrim. Uh, now that those guys are dead, we really didn't have to kill them that way. It was probably a safer way to do it. Uh, you might be wondering, what have we got? Well, over here we've got another blood drop cap. I thought there was some kind of a switch or something we could hit here. But I guess not. Uh, so this is just a way to come up. Uh, we're going to dive back in the water. Funnily enough, I panicked when I first fell in the water when I was doing this. Here we've got some etherweed under here, so we'll grab this. I panicked and I didn't see any ladders. So I thought we'd been plunged into this horrible, horrible, dangerous area with no real easy way out. Sandman's going to start drowning. Uh, maybe we should rest. I don't rest much just because it doesn't. it's not good for food, right? Like, so Tikrit's starving again already. It's not good for food. I don't like it that much, but we'll do that. Okay, that's okay. We just want to get a bit more energy. Um, so I ended up running through a lot of these tunnels. Sanon is taking a long time to regen. Don't forget that because he's got this perk as well. The uh, the trait uh, for concentration, wherever the heck it is. He's got so many now, it's unbelievable. He actually regenerates energy quicker too, like 30% quicker. And it's still making it. He's still struggling with it. Alright, that's fine. Okay, let's cast light so we can see nicely while we're underwater. And we're going to go down here. There's no secret buttons on the walls. Except when you come down here... You will find a ladder and you want to take this one up where you'll find a secret button here. Now this secret button, if we go back the way we came, opens this secret wall, which again allows us up, and we get a secret as you can see. Now unfortunately, the secret, as cool as it was to find, doesn't have that much great stuff for us. We just get another pearl shield, which I suppose we can put on Jonker like so, and throw the round shield away. And now he's got like double shield business going on, that's kind of fun. Um, but, you know, uh, other than that, there's really not too much. What is it? A lockpick here? Just more broadhead arrows. There you go. I had so many more broadhead arrows on my other fire when I got to this point. It was crazy. Like, uh, we had 19 before leaving, I'm pretty sure. Um, and some more frost bombs. So, you know, it, it, it's nice, but it's not the be-all and end-all in terms of secrets. If we come to Deserune first, getting that pearl shield would have actually maybe been really, really awesome. So, there we go. Got that one. And to progress further along, instead, this time, not taking the right to find the secret button. If we come all the way up here... We'll find where we're where these skeletons were. Here is a very cool item that we've been waiting a long time for. The rogue pants. Protection plus five, dex plus one. A pair of pants woven from fine, lightweight thread. Oh, yes. Yeah, so we can put that over the mirror stuff. 
um, which was protection and resist all. And now, Loto Patho is looking pretty hot in a lot of his rogue stuff. Why doesn't he have rogue boots on? That's kind of weird. Shouldn't he have rogue, rogue boots at the moment? I'll have to look that up after the episode. Jesus. I thought he, he would have had almost the whole set now. Alright, but still, that's very good. Those are great stats for him, and that's going to be a really cool armor set. So, and they're just kind of laying there. Maybe even one of the skeletons dropped them. Oh, here we go. There we go. That's why I had so few arrows, because we'd fired so many of them. There we go. We've got 21 now. That looks much more like it. Sweet. So, there you go. That's uh, that little chamber. And when we come out, um, oh yes, and now we can just pull the lever again. Lever, lever. There's an old Grimrock one thing. Uh, we can now turn this off and we can go back. Uh, you do want to watch co corridors like this. They do a bit of a thing like the pyramid does where they'll jump you with lots of other random enemies. But mostly I think we'll be alright. And uh, we'll go back into the main chamber. Now we could put this, this round key in either hole. It doesn't actually matter which hole we go for. Oh my god, I've been recording so long. We've only done one of the things. I really need to speed this up. Jesus. Uh, oh, I'm going the wrong way. What am I doing? Uh, you can put it into either hole. I'm going to put it in this, the, the one that is respective to where it originally came from. Loto. Oh man, when you actually feed people in this game. Jeez, when you're a decent human. Look at this. They're starving constantly. If I didn't go back and get all this extra food. We still have the tart, so that's fine. Horned fruit. You eat that. No, you eat that. I, I mean, I could eat, make them eat twice, so it wouldn't come up so much, but I feel like that would be inefficient somehow. Get some throwing knives. We really don't care about them. People have mentioned to me that apparently throwing weapons scale much better than uh, missile weapons in this game, which apparently it was also the same in Grimrock 1 too. Uh, I just uh, never really experienced that. So if you guys are thinking of doing a file, maybe instead of going for the bows and stuff, just go for missile weapons. All right. Um, not missile weapons, sorry. Throwing weapons. This next area, again, is quite short if you know where you're going, but mostly it's a bit of a labyrinth. So you'll notice there's like an underground passage right there, underground passage right here. There are no secret buttons, but over here we've got a button which opens up two other doors. So let's do it systematically. We're going to go down here first. We're going to take a right, and then we're just going to explore these little tunnels. This one here will wind you quite far along. Oh god, I thought the sword was in the other area for a second there. Okay, good job. Jonker, I can't wait to get you some accuracy, bro. Nice. Oh, that felt so good swiping across. We get the dual pendant in here. This is cool, but unnecessary for us. I mean, the, the flavor text on it sounds amazing. The golden necklace itself would be a worth a fortune. The huge amethyst attached to it makes you feel rich beyond your wildest dreams. Uh, but it's just willpower plus two, and frankly, we already have willpower plus two and resist shock, so it is just straight up worse than what we've already got. Unfortunate, but there you go. Here we get a speed potion. Lots of potions sort of slowly going around. It'll be good for any other big kind of boss style encounters we have coming up. Perhaps when we go back to the desert, that'll be another big one for us where we do a lot of stuff. Do a lot of bombs, those kinds of things. And that's pretty much it. I don't remember any more secret switches here. We'll uh, pick up this fish. And this should just loop us around to the other area, which we can now climb up. So there you go. Uh, pretty basic stuff. Now we're gonna, and just to be, yeah, and we can drop down there. Now we're gonna press this button and go a little bit deeper into the labyrinth. We've got a choice, left or right. And an ooze to kill. As soon as he comes to us. They seem like blind somehow. Oh, what a good hit. Oh my god. Okay, and a frost guy. Brilliant. And we still don't have a way of dealing with these. Uh, just again, just make sure you swap your weapons and you don't go stupidly healing it up. Uh, mostly I think we'll be alright. There we go. Good. He only managed to get, what, one attack off on us? Uh, this area is actually kind of dangerous with the enemies it starts throwing at you, so you do want to be cautious of that. Here we get some more pellets. Oh my god, how obvious is it that I'm winging it right now? Because <laughs> this is just... Uh, the thing is with any labyrinth, I feel like, you just pick all the options, right? You just go down all the doors until it's done. I actually, um, on my original file, got very lucky, I suppose. Because every decision, every branch I made, even including those first two we've already gone down before we opened the door, I just ended up at the right place. I finished the whole damn thing. Uh, and then I was like, oh, well, what else is here? And it was just dead end after dead end after dead end. Another ooze. Pretty comfortable, just sort of cutting him back. There we go. That was pretty good. If he diseased me there, I would have been quite sad. Here we get some mudware. You'll notice that mudware is rather rare. Um, and, uh, you know, that that appears in the flavor text too. But that does come about from the fact that it's used in some quite interesting potions. Uh, one thing I never really showed you guys um, is the fact that you can make... Bo oh, God. Okay. Where did that come from? Ah, you're over there. Is you can make bombs with um, some of the black moss that we've been finding. I guess we'll do that in another video. It would be sort of stupid to do it here right now. 
Ah, uh, the thing is with the flurry, it's just you, you stay in the line of fire for a little bit too long. Oh, wrong spell. Oh, God. That wasn't clever. Thank you. There we go. All right, down. Okay, so he came from over there. But the question is, how do we get over there? Well, over here we also had this um, uh, gateway that was shut somehow. Well, if we have a look, I believe... Is this is this uh, the next secret? I think we fire an arrow over there. Uh, was it an arrow or was it just a secret button? There's something that creates a pathway right here in this room somewhere. Perhaps it was down on the floor. In this little dead end. Hmm... Yeah, there you go. There's the secret button. Yeah, this. So remember, as I said, you got a secret on the right-hand chamber. You got a secret on the left-hand chamber. This is the one on the left. We hit the secret button, and through here we can find another secret. Again, another tome. I love the descriptions of the tomes in this game. They are so cool. So this one uh, is a tome of earth. Resist poison plus twenty. Currently, uh, Loto Pafo doesn't actually have his poison maxed out because of that bracer, right? Which we unequipped. So I am going to put this on him just to sort of stack to his strengths here. Uh, centipedes and beetles. Crawl from beneath the covers of this book. A thick smell of mold fills the air when the book is opened. Lovely. Uh, we'll do that. Maybe there's some merit to coming here before the bog and then you get this. And, you know, you get uh, the uh, bracer as well without having to get that stuff from um, from the cache earlier on. You know? It's like if you if you don't pick the rope and stuff from the cache, maybe do Deserun first. I feel like there's some kind of ordering there that they want you to do. Um, but otherwise, I think we're done with this tiny little branch here. Ultimately, we do we do want to get through that gate, but I think we get through that from the other side, unless I'm very sorely mistaken. Or do we can't climb? Uh, maybe we climb up. Hold on. Do we climb up and then fire across this way? Is this the one where it is? No. Oh, here we go. There's the lever. Right. And now this will open this gate. <laughs> I thought there was something very, very wrong there for a second. And now this is the last little chamber of this place. Uh, again, more mud work. Never say no. And we come to a point where we're going to release a whole ton of enemies back into the labyrinth. So be prepared at this point. I'm going to save to our loving file live here. Okay. And uh, he can hit us through that. That really sucks. There's the secret button right next to that. So here we go. We're going to press this. And that's going to open this gate over here, but only for a very brief period of time. So we're going to fire an arrow through. Damn it. Too late. That didn't work. Um, so I only open it for a very brief window. We might as well come down here. We've got some cheese on the floor. Nom nom nom. Enjoy that. Tickrit. That's like the only time where I'll feed him food without him being hungry. If he finds cheese. I appreciate a rat's need for cheese, okay? I'm not that cruel. Alright, here we go. So we'll do that. And then we'll fire very quickly. And now this is going to open. But stuff will open behind us as well. So we want to be quick dealing with these guys. There's two ooze in here. I'm going to move Loto Patho back. I'm not actually particularly concerned about the disease right now. He can att attack from the back line anyway. I really do like this setup of having, you know, a lot of people who can be okay in the front, you know. Uh, you got to remember, guys, we could have stayed with a wizard. We could have stayed Sanon on a wizard and he would have been way squishier. He wouldn't be having these uh, frequent energy issues that you're seeing, but, uh, you know, it would have been okay. So we'll craft another one of these. We've still got that. So those two. Move that over there. Move that up. We can reclaim our arrow. And uh, place something else on this instead, like uh, <laughs> like this super expensive jewel pendant. Sure. Oh my god, hello. You're one of the enemies that got released behind me, aren't you? Well, I was not expecting to see you here. If you disease us again, I'll be very angry. This is me very angry. There we go. Oh, the clicking. My uh, actions per minute are so high. I tried for a while when I was changing my recording setup around to use um, this other thing. It's like an ATI method of recording. And they don't just show you your FPS. They show you the amount of actions you're making, taking per minute as well. It seems so useless to me. All right, here we go. Oh, man, I really want to backstab with that with that special ability too. Or something. Maybe we should do that now. Let's try it, okay? So what we'll do is... But the thing is, it's an ooze. You can't backstab oozes. This sucks. This really sucks. All right, so let's move on now, shall we? believe there are frost elementals too, so you want to be prepared for that. Uh, I might just throw a frost bomb. Oh god, wow, that was a big waste, wasn't it? <laughs> that was so bad. Uh, okay, hold on. Let me get a energy potion. Energy potion, there you go, San. And I think this is the first big energy potion we've drank. Now we can recast our light spell. And make our way back. I know, there, there's one of them. I know that, I think there's at least two. I remember really struggling here. Oh god, wrong weapon there. I don't really want that either. I'm guessing a frost bomb won't work. 
Hello. Okay, that's him dead. Did you guys just hear a second enemy, or was that just me? There's another arrow there. We reclaimed it. Okay, good. I guess he just got released from here. I thought there were two, but all right, fine. That totally suits me because we now have both keys and we're pretty much free to get out the hell out of this labyrinth. Oh, no. Hello. <laughs> Where did you come from? I don't remember you at all. I thought it was just in that little room. I remember there being a lot of enemies releasing back in here. There we go. Oh, I'm loving how we are really ripping through them at the moment, though. We don't need to drink another antidote potion. You must have been released from here, right? Here we go. So these are two uh, regular healing potions. I mean, which is nice. There is nothing amazing, though, obviously. Uh, let's go back through here. And then we're in the main hallway, right? So we can just go up. Sweet. Uh, yeah, I won't do that because I'll go to the save crystal um, between episodes here. But there we go, guys. That is both keys. Or maybe we can even progress a little bit. That is both keys. We'll put this in. We find a helmet in here. And this is a really cool piece of gear for Jonker. Uh, now, he's got the plate helmet, right, which is protection plus 12. This thing is only protection plus 4, and it drops his evasion, okay? Which is already incredibly low anyway. We'll level him up in a second, and then he'll get his evasion back. But this is strength plus 4. So in here, he has got a lot more strength, because he found that skull as well. I found something really interesting earlier that actually, um... If he stopped carrying the skulls when he's at high carry capacity, he actually can't, like, he has to carry the skulls to get the strength to carry everything. And the second you start removing skulls from his inventory, he gets weighed down. It's really weird. It's like carrying more allows him to carry more. It's, it's odd. Anyway, so we'll pull this lever. And by doing this, you'll notice a whole ton of enemies are released into the dungeon. Thing is, though, they're mostly just um, cannon fodder for you. They're just the, uh, the skeletons, so I like to come into this entrance here where these guys are released and just fight them from here because then obviously you're only being attacked from one angle. It's always weird to me that there's little chambers like this where enemies are just sort of watching you, waiting in the wings. I'm sure those guys can be backstabbed, so let's try. Oh, that was such a good backstab. That was more of a side stab, but okay. Um, Jonka, I'll put you down there because I'm not totally confident that you'll be alright there, bro. I hope you're not too insulted by that fact, but you know, you are kind of weak and you are diseased. I like how disease in this game isn't like remotely contagious. One thing I really miss about Guild Wars 1 for Guild Wars 2 is the disease mechanic that the old game used to have. Imagine poison, but if you walk next to someone, then you get poisoned as well. That was basically disease from GW1 and it was super strong. It actually encouraged you to be really positional about the way you played the game and encourage you to not stand too close to other players. It's stuff like that that would really put a damper down on, on stacking, for example. If it couldn't be Condi cleansed, you actually, actually had to wait for it to run out. Something like that. Anyway, come on. We're just dancing around these guys. We're pretty much all out of mana, though, so it's taking a bit longer. You don't appreciate how much damage Sanon does until you start running out of mana. But there we go. That's all the enemies defeated. And the stairway down to uh, progress. Oh, oh, and further, where they were released from. Jeez, almost forgot this. We do get a power gem. There we go. And this one over here doesn't have any loot for us, but we do get a power gem. So that is awesome. Check it out. We've now got two of these um, with a potential third if we were to go back to the desert. Let's head down. Of course, we haven't even got a shrine really to dedicate them in yet. Uh, and as we move around here, now we're in the, uh, the archives officially, right? And you'll see, actually, we've already explored a lot of the archives, so I can't imagine us spending too long here just because of these big chambers from the other puzzles. Um, but we'll find that we come to a crossroads. This crossroads has three options for us. One is the Hamlet of Stormbreach Sewer Access. One has some bread, which is delicious. There you go. Enjoy. Uh, one is a wind gate to the surface. And the third is the archives itself. Uh, by pre standing on the pressure pad, we open up all of these. What do I want to drop on it? Um, uh, I guess this scroll, follow the light. That's fine. And uh, we get our choice. First, we'll take the wind gate to the surface. And what do you know? We're out here. Check it out. A long time ago we saw this first, right? A long time ago. And now we're on the other side. So similar to how the desert had like a wind gate that sort of uh, let you through. This one is very similar. And now we can just come through here to skip to the bottom of the ruins of Deserune. And we have a choice though. Do we want to go to the Hamlet of Stormbreach or do we want to do the archives? Um, I'll let you guys decide. But first I'll show you if we come this way to the... Towards... Oh wait, no. Those, those are the archives. Crap. If we do come towards the Hamlet of Stormbreach... I'll show you guys what's in store for us. We go another stairway down here. So we're technically two floors down at the moment. There is a save crystal above us. Um, and as we climb up, we can interact with this. That's actually pretty useful for me. 
but here you'll see we get a sign that says um, sewer exit east. So you might think, oh, we've got to go all the way through the sewers to do the, 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 the hamlet, right? And then finally you get back out. No, no, no. Oh, hello, Mr. Tell. <laughs> hello. No, we can get out right now. And we're in a new area, guys. We're at the hamlet of Stormbreach. This is a lovely, beautiful beach area with lots of food and untouched wildlife. Oh, amazing. Check it out. This is the north side of the island. We're on the other side of the island now. Look at this. Oh, with tons of turtles. Oh, it's brilliant. So, yeah, uh, this will be what we do next episode. Let me know, guys. Archives or out here. It's up to you. Through the sewers, even. And uh, we'll see how it, how it progresses. I'll grab some of this food. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.